Ephimers, optimers, and nanobodies are all cutting-edge alternatives that share similar principles to antibodies but offer unique advantages. Whether they are easier to produce, offer higher specificity or stability, or own a unique therapeutic features. Let's explore their mechanism, engineering process, and therapeutic uses. Starting with ephimers, these are small engineered proteins specifically designed to target antigens, much like antibodies. One key advantage of ephimers is their compact size, about one-tenth that of an antibody, and their rapid production time, requiring only about seven weeks compared to the seven to 12 months needed for antibodies. Let's talk more about the structure of an ephimer. It consists of a single domain made of scaffold protein, which contain a loop region that is specific for antigen binding. Ephimers are produced using recombinant DNA technology, where the gene encoding ephimers protein is inserted into bacterial or yeast expression system, which allows rapid and cost-effective production. After that, to engineer an ephimer in targeting specific antigen, the process will involve a phage display or mRNA display. Here, a library of potential ephimers is generated and tested for their ability to bind to specific targets. Ephimers offer a variety of potentials in therapeutic applications. Although there are still no FDA-approved agents, but it has shown great potential in preclinical phases. Ephimers can be used as targeted drug delivery system. Also, it can be utilized in diagnostic tests due to their small size and high specificity to detect specific biomarkers. Moving to aptamers. Aptamers are short single-stranded DNA or RNA that can fold into 3D shape, allowing them to bind specifically to targets like antigens. They are often referred as chemical antibodies because of the way they are produced, which will be explained later. Aptamers mechanism work by binding to targeted molecules through their complementary shape. Their unique folding create a binding pocket that fit to specific targets. Unlike antibodies, aptamers are flexible and can penetrate into tight spaces on target molecules, allowing them to bind to challenging epitopes. Aptamers are produced through process called CELEX, systematic evolution of ligands by exponential enrichment, which involve 1. Creating a large library of random neclutide sequences. 2. Incubating the library with the target molecules. 3. Selecting sequences that bind to the target with high affinity. 4. Amplifying the selected sequences. This process is entirely in vitro, making aptamers production faster and more cost-effective. Therapeutic uses of aptamers can vary. 1. Can be used as drug delivery system. 2. Can be used for detecting specific biomarkers. 3. Aid in drug development by acting as a tool to study molecular interaction during drug delivery process. There is an FDA-approved agent called pegaptinib macugen, which is indicated for age-related macular degradation. Now, let's talk about nanobodies. Nanobodies are single-domain antibodies derived from heavy-chain antibodies found in camelids. Nanobodies are significantly smaller than antibodies. They are extremely stable, as they are able to withstand high temperature, low pH, and harsh chemical environment. The structure of nanobodies consists of single variable domain of camelid heavy chain only antibody. Their small size allows them to bind to epitopes inaccessible to larger antibodies and penetrate deeper into tissues for better therapeutic effects. To produce nanobodies, camelids will be immunized with targeted antigen, then their B cells will be isolated. Genes that encode single domain antibody will be extracted and used in phage display library. Here the genes expressing nanobodies with highest affinity to targeted antigens will be selected and produced using bacterial, yeast, or mammalian cell system, making production cost-effective and scalable. Nanobodies have shown promise in various therapeutic uses. They can neutralize viral or bacterial antigens like those of SARS-CoV-2, can be used in imaging and biosensors due to their small size and specificity and can cross blood-brain barrier, so it can be used in neurological disorders. As of FDA-approved agents, there is only one approved in 2019 called caplicizumab, which is used to treat acquired thrombotic thrombocytopenia purpura. That wraps up this series. If you found this series helpful and want to learn more, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments about topics you'd like us to cover next.
Thank you for watching, and let's keep learning together.